Hi y'all, and welcome to the Macrophylla and Serrata hydrangea trials. So in this video, we're going to be talking about hydrangea macrophylla and serrata care, trialing them specifically, some of the varieties I've trialed in the past, a lot of where the genetics came from, which will be really interesting, uh, how pH and aluminum affects bloom color on macrophylla and serrata, if at all, and just overall planting conditions. As a southerner, I love a good blue macrophylla hydrangea that you see in the south or in Cape Cod. Uh, but as someone who lives in Southwest Ohio, that's not something we can replicate very easily up here sometimes. We have really harsh winters, sometimes really wet winters, late frost in the spring, and all of those things can damage the buds on hydrangea macrophylla and serrata uh, so that you do not get blooms the coming year. So let's talk a little bit about history first. So hydrangea macrophylla historically did not rebloom, and that's called remontinency. Um, there's been breeding going on for 20 years or so to bring forth those reblooming traits, either by just noticing that a hydrangea macrophylla reblooms, like Endless Summer, the original, which we have here and I'll be showing you or crossbreeding hydrangea macrophylla with hydrangea serrata, which tend to have hardier buds and do rebloom to bring some of those nice full mop head blooms to uh, macrophyllas that rebloom. Now, hydrangea macrophylla and serrata are two different species. You may have heard them called big leaf, which is hydrangea macrophylla. They tend to have the mop head blooms, but they can have lace cap blooms. And then hydrangea serrata. Hydrangea serratas are referred to as mountain hydrangeas, and they bloom on both old wood and new wood and they have hardier buds because they're from East Asia where in the mountains where it gets really cold and so those buds have to survive to be able to flower, pollinate, and reproduce in those mountainous areas. I'm going to go through each of the varieties that I planted here. There are about 21. I have a total of about 25. We're going to cover four of them in a separate video because I was not able to plant them here but I'm really excited about trying them out. Before we get started on a lot of the other talks today, I want to recommend a book to you if you've never read it or if you've never heard of the author this is the hydrangea book, The Authoritative Guide by Michael Durr. Michael Durr is a breeder of hydrangeas and actually started some of the genetics for the Endless Summer variety, which actually ended up in a lot of these hydrangeas you see behind me. So there's a lot of information in here, everything you want to know about hydrangeas and various species and also specific varieties, which is really helpful because he's trialed a lot of them in Georgia and he'll tell you his experience down there of the ones that he's found that work really well. Now it's early morning here. We have had a significant amount of rain this week. I'm talking inches and inches. So I've not been able to get out and shoot this video. Uh, lots of thunderstorms, but the hydrangeas are looking really good since I got them planted. And this bed, just to orient you, this is the east and this is the west. So some of these hydrangeas are going to get morning sun and some are going to get afternoon sun. And then during the day, this is a pretty thickly shaded maple, but there is a little dappled sunlight in there. So let's talk about hydrangea placement. On some of these tags, and specifically I see it a lot on Proven Winners tags, it says these hydrangeas can take full sun. Depending on where you live in the United States, I would not recommend placing those in full sun. Full sun means about eight hours. If you're in a northern climate that gets um, not as hot or as humid environment, you might be able to get away with full sun. If you live in Southwest Ohio or Alabama or anywhere in the South, you cannot place these hydrangeas in full sun and expect them to do very well unless you're giving them lots of water. So these are on drip irrigation. Just as a qualifier, most of my garden is on drip irrigation because it just allows me to take care of it very easily. But hydrangeas need some protection, specifically macrophyllas and serratas, else they will wilt really bad or the blooms will look really bad from the wilting and the lack of water. So giving them some dappled shade, especially in the afternoon, morning sun's really good for them. Uh, you'll be better off if you position them well to begin with. Now I do have a couple varieties in this bed up here, including Let's Dance Lovable and Let's Dance Can Do, which probably do get full sun. But those are trialing conditions I'm testing out for those. These are more like ideal conditions. They could probably use a little more sun, but given that I don't have a very shaded property, I just have some very big shade trees. I think this is gonna be as close to ideal as I can provide at this time for these trialing conditions. Now, let's talk about macrophylla. So hydrangea macrophylla typically, as I said, did not rebloom on new wood. So old wood is wood that was set last year. 
uh, and new wood is wood or stems that grow this year. And so hydrangea macrophylla typically set blooms on old wood. So it would set those blooms in fall. Those blooms would have to make it all the way through winter into spring, not be killed off by freezes, not be killed off by late frost, and then bloom again in that spring summer time period. Here where we have those bad winter conditions in a lot of parts of the country, those blooms would die over winter, which means if they only set buds on old blooms, then they wouldn't produce buds again until the coming fall, and then you would have no blooms on the hydrangea at all in the summer. It would probably just be some luscious green growth, uh, and that is no good. That's not why you're planting a hydrangea. Hydrangea serrata is a mountain hydrangea, and they have hardier blooms, but they bloom on old wood and new wood, and so you'll always probably get some blooms off of them. Now, hydrangea macrophylla, the blooming was first originally found on Endless Summer, the original, which I planted and I'll show you here. And the genetics of Endless Summer, the original, has been bred into lots of other hydrangeas that I have behind me here. So remontenancy or reblooming just means it sets buds on old growth, like I just mentioned, but also new growth. So some of the points of the breeding over the past several years has tried to introduce that reblooming faster, reblooming all along the stem, because typically hydrangea macrophylla just set a bud like at the end of the stem. But if you can set flower buds all the way up the stem, then you may get a little more protection on those lower branches, so you'll get earlier blooming if we have a bad winter, or you just get more blooms in general and blooms that bloom quicker. Let's talk about changing the bloom color because that's what a lot of people are interested in. So bloom color largely depends on the pH of your soil, but that's not it. So here in Southwest Ohio, we have a higher pH. It's higher than seven. We are typically not naturally going to get blue hydrangeas. We would have to add an acidifier uh, to the soil like um, aluminum sulfate, and that gets me to my second point. Your hydrangeas will not turn blue if there's not a presence of aluminum in the soil. Something I learned from Mr. Durr's book is that aluminum becomes insoluble at a pH above 6.5. So even if you have aluminum in your soil, if your pH is high enough, your hydrangea can't access that aluminum and it's gonna be pink anyway. So you can have a really low acidic pH and if you have no aluminum in your soil, the blooms aren't gonna be blue. Not all hydrangeas turn a brilliant blue color like others. Some have been bred to be a beautiful, kind of more darkish red uh, as their primary color. And so when they turn blue, they may be more of a purple. Uh, then they are red. Some of the varieties are really good at turning that really baby Nantucket blue, like in the summer, the original. Others are not. So typically that happens on both uh, macrophyllas and serratas, the color change. But some of them, as I'll show you today, are white and may not change blue or pink at all, or they might have slight tinges of blue or pink, depending on the color of, or the pH of the soil and the presence of aluminum. Let's talk a little bit about pruning. And so hydrangea macrophylla and serrata, you do not want to prune. The only pruning you may consider is trimming off the blooms after they look pretty rough. And so I'm gonna be doing that today and showing you how to do that. But otherwise, you want to situate and plant a hydrangea macrophylla and serrata so you do not have to prune on it. If you prune on it and you have an old hydrangea macrophylla that doesn't bloom on new wood, like all of these here, then you're going to risk losing some blooms. It doesn't mean you can't prune on those hydrangeas, but just realize you may be cutting off buds and you may not get blooms. And that's why we planted hydrangeas. Hydrangea macrophylla and serrata are not necessarily deer resistant. I have not experienced a whole lot of deer issues in my new garden. Existing viewers realize that I've been here exactly a year now. And so we'll see as the garden progresses if I have any more deer, but I think because of the way our house is situated, we're kind of surrounded by fields or neighbors all around us. To some degree, I'm hoping there's not a whole lot of wooded areas that deer will come through and bother the garden. But if we start having issues, then I may have to start using a spray or something else to combat those deer issues. Now, something else I learned from Mr. Durr's book is that maybe the hydrangea macrophyllas are not consistent from year to year. And that's something that breeders have been working on, but it's something he talks about a lot in his book. He'll see that one hydrangea blooms really well one year, the next year it doesn't, and he's in Georgia. So that's just something you have to deal with. And that's something I'm looking for here as part of this trialing process. I want things that rebloom reliably from year to year for me. And those that don't, after a few years, I'll remove them. And as new things come to the market, 
we'll replace some of those or I'll find somewhere to tuck new things to continue this process. It's going to be an ongoing experiment and I'm looking forward to doing it so I can find what works best here for us in Zone 6 or Southwest Ohio. Note, when I say zone six, zone six simply means how cold it gets. So just because I'm in zone six doesn't mean that a hydrangea planted here may work as well for you in your zone six if you don't have similar planting conditions. We tend to have very wet winters here, very cold winters, which zone six means uh, up to negative 10 Fahrenheit. But uh, just realize that the zone, when I say that, only means how cold it gets to negative 10. It, it addresses no other environmental conditions. Let's talk about sizing a bit. Hydrangea macrophylla typically got really large, or it could. Uh, a lot of these I've planted behind me, some of them say they'll get five to six foot tall and wide. A lot of them stay in that two to three to four foot range. And so I've spaced them appropriately, so maybe they will slightly touch each other. But also here in Southwest Ohio, because we do have hard winters, a lot of the things I'm going to be testing here is rebloom. And we have a lot of stem death, or at least I have when I planted hydrangea macrophylla and serrata in the past. So that ability to produce buds on new growth is really important because sometimes these may die all the way to the ground. So it means it's unlikely that some of these hydrangeas I've planted will get six foot tall and wide. Uh, and if they do, I will be really excited about it. And that's something we're going to be testing out. But like I said, I think a lot of these, based on my experience, are probably going to die down a little bit in the winter and will need a little pruning off in the spring. And that's the exception to pruning that I talked about. If you have dead stems or damaged stems, of course, cut those out and give them time long enough in the spring to wake up. If they're dry and brittle and are not waking up, go ahead and prune those out. So I have around 21 hydrangeas in the bed behind me. I have all of the endless summer varieties that are available. A lot of the proven winter ones, uh, a few of the Monrovia ones, I think there's a total of four, and a Blooming Easy variety. I have a couple other varieties that I'll go over in a separate video later, but these are the ones that fit well and some of the ones that stayed the smallest, so the planting would be very similar around the tree. Now, planting, let's talk about planting because I did not shoot that. It was difficult to dig under this tree. It's going to be difficult to dig under any tree, but I did put down this mulch and then I overhead watered this area for a couple days before planting, which made digging in it so much easier. Uh, and in the planting hole, I added some Osmocote around the plant, which is a long-term um, slow-release fertilizer that works really good. It's similar to what the greenhouses or the nurseries put in the top of your containers that you'll see the little green pellets. And then I added some good organic fertilizer by Job's, and it was a knockout rose fertilizer. I am not specifically like picking any specific fertilizers. Any woody shrub fertilizer, which is a knockout rose, will work good for your hydrangeas. I typically use holly tone uh, because I can get it cheaply at Costco in the spring. And it's a little acidic, which helps bring down our higher pH soil a little, little bit. So I tend to use holly tone as a general purpose fertilizer. I didn't buy any this year. And I had some knockout uh, rose fertilizer from Job's that I got on sale last fall. And so I'm using up the fertilizer I have available, which I would recommend you do. So I mentioned drip irrigation. Each of these have two two gallon per hour emitters. This year, because my garden is all new, I'm running my drip irrigation for a full hour, which means all of these hydrangeas are getting four gallons of water which seems like a lot, and it is, but these are also just now getting acclimated and it has been very hot this week, even though we've had a lot of rain. Um, so I typically, after things get acclimated, cut that down to 30 minutes of duration of time for my drip irrigation. So that means these hydrangeas will get about two gallons. Now realize that still seems like a lot, but they're also competing with um, this tree behind me that it's under. And this is a very established maple. It could be close to 25 to 30 years old. I'm not exactly sure, but given how mature it is, it's probably at its like close to final biggest size. And that means the roots of this tree go all the way out to the canopy. And so if not further, so these hydrangeas are gonna be competing for nutrition and water, and I'm gonna make sure I'm fertilizing these hydrangeas regularly. Going forward, because this is a trial process, I put the same amount of drip on all of these so they'd be getting the same amount of water, but I'm also gonna be putting the same amount of fertilizer on them in spring and then partway through summer because hydrangeas are heavy feeders and they would like a little bit of fertilizer to keep those blooms in check and producing really well for me. 
Now, because I've also experienced a little bit of chlorosis issues on the hydrangeas that I planted in the bed behind the camera, I went ahead and added some uh, EDDHA iron to all of the hydrangeas in this bed to get them through fall. So hopefully we'll have no chlor chlorosis issues on any of these. Now a little disclaimer about some of the hydrangeas. A lot of the proven winter ones, not all of them, were provided to me at Cultivate. So I picked some of those up for free from Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs. The rest of the hydrangeas I purchased locally uh, from local garden centers to me. And that is important because I want you to realize that the, some of the Proven Winners ones, and I'll point those out, which I received from Cultivate, um, or grown for show. And so they look really great right now, most of them. And the other ones came from greenhouse nursery conditions. Some of them are brand new this year. You can tell they were potted up. Uh, I was told that by the garden center not too long ago. And so they were still growing into their containers. And other ones that are not the biggest sellers may have been left over from last year and they may have been in their containers for a while. Some of them have a lot of growth on them and so I know that they are not new to their container this year and other ones are fairly small and do not have a lot of blooms if at any blooms. So I know they were properly planted in the spring and they've been growing on for sale this fall. All that being said, I just want that to be an indicator that this video is not a good indicator on how well these are blooming through regular soil and winter and seasonality conditions. So next spring will be the perfect opportunity to evaluate. These were planted all at the same time. They've, they'll have roughly three months to settle in before we head into our uh, rough winters. Hopefully this winter's not too bad. And then when things wake up in the spring, we'll be able to evaluate which ones woke up first. Uh, I'm gonna try and keep a very detailed record of this so we can evaluate it over the coming years, but also subscribe if you're not a subscriber on YouTube and you want to follow along with these and we'll be keeping an update on these regularly throughout the season. And as I fertilize, I'm gonna try and do so very consistently with a measuring cup and that type thing to make this as scientific as possible, um, even though this is not a super scientific experiment. So let's take a look at the hydrangeas, shall we? So I created an Excel sheet with information on all of these just so you could have them. One thing I noticed generally while looking up all of this data is Proven Winners tends to list all of their hydrangeas uh, from zone five to nine. Endless Summer tends to list a lot of them from four to nine. Uh, and I think most of them may work in four, but I think Proven Winners is targeting zones that these will rebloom well in and in a sufficient number, it has a sufficient growing period to rebloom well. So I may not recommend some of these in zone four if you live in zone four, even though uh, they say they will work in zone four, just because if you're going to plant them, you probably want the blooms from them. And you may not have a long enough growing cycle in your season for these to rebloom easily. So I've got the zone, the height, the spread, and some interesting features. I'm going to talk about a few things that I have noticed since I planted them or since they've been sitting for the past couple weeks in their containers. And then a few of the ones I grew at my last garden, and I'll tell you what those are and my experience with them as well. So I arranged these hydrangeas alphabetically by brand, and so we're gonna go through them alphabetically. But first, I wanna talk about the original because this is where a lot of the genetics came from for most of the hydrangeas, if not all of the hydrangeas behind me here. So this is Endless Summer, the original, and this one can get pretty big. Um, it is zone four to nine, three to five foot tall and wide. And its typical traits are that it has those soft pink to light blue, baby blue, Nantucket blue flowers. And so this is a disclaimer that this one was just planted this season. So you can see how much green growth it's put on it, but it doesn't have a whole lot of blooms yet. This was probably planted in March, maybe at the garden center uh, from a plug or container or a potentially bare root, but it is already setting some new buds here. So this bloom has opened since I brought it home. This did not have any blood buds on it two weeks ago. So you can see this bud is brand new and looking really good. I actually feel like it's opened mostly since I planted it a week ago. So there's a lot of buds on some of these hydrangeas that were not there a week ago when I planted them, which is really exciting. This one was founded at, um, St. Paul, Minnesota. And so Endless Summer, the whole series comes from genetics and the original comes from St. Paul, Minnesota. And so I'm gonna be traveling to Bailey Nursery in two days to see these hydrangeas grown in fields. I'm gonna take you along and show you those. And I'm really excited about it, but 
as you're looking at the other hydrangeas, understand that a lot of the genetics came from this single plant, which is really exciting to have in the garden and see how it does. This one's kind of situated to the back. I did space these hydrangeas so the shorter ones are up front so they'll get more light and the ones behind it will also get a sufficient number of light as the sun sets that way or in the morning when the sun comes up this way. So we're going to skip around a little bit first because I want to show you this variety called Twist and Shout. So this is a sport that was discovered by Michael Durr in a hedgerow of Endless Summer, the original. So this is a hydrangea macrophylla but this is an example of lace cap blooms like I told you about that macrophyllas can exhibit, which is common with serrata hydrangeas. This is a very vigorous hydrangea, so it is also the parentage of it has been bred down to a lot of the other varieties as well. You can see how many blooms it's put on just since I planted it this past week. We got three, four, another one setting here, five. It is very floriferous, and it's also one of the biggest potentially in this garden. So this one is on four to nine, three to five foot tall, and three to four foot wide, and it has dependable blooms, sturdy stems, which is important in a macrophylla or really any hydrangea, and the stems are also kind of interestingly red a little bit here. So this is a very exciting variety that I'm excited to have in my garden. It was more pollinator friendly because it has the fertile florets here at the top at the lace cap and all of the infertile florets. So it's really beautiful. It's starting to, it's a little purple, so it's probably a little bit mixed in um, the pH here, and it's probably transitioning a bit, some of these new blooms, to their uh, pink stage because of my hard water and because I have a higher pH soil. So we've had a lot of rain and it's probably getting acclimated to those conditions already. So this variety here is also an endless summer called Bloomstruck and I did have this one in my last garden. In my last garden I purchased a lot of them on clearance at Home Depot and they were really pitiful and I got them in the garden as tiny tiny one gallons uh, if not less than one gallons and they did rebloom reliably for me. One of the interesting thing in Michael Durr's book is that endless summer bloomstruck is so prolific that a lot of people didn't like it. A lot of breeders or growers because it would set bloom so quickly on new growth that it was hard to take cuttings from to propagate it. So that tells you how interestingly quick this thing sets blooms. Now it does have interesting red stems, which is why I liked it at my last garden. And since I put it in the ground, it started producing some beautiful buds as well. I was able to get this one to turn blue at my last garden by adding some coffee grounds to the garden over winter. Um, they the thing I like about Bloomstruck is it's a very deep pink and in between uh, the pink and blue stage it is this gorgeous purple. So sometimes you'll get purple if the pH in the aluminum is just right on what the hydrangea likes. Not every hydrangea turns blue at the same pH or the same aluminum content. So it's just something you have to test out and try and see which work, what works best for you. The blooms on this one are a little aged and so um, it's going to be setting some more, so follow along if you want to see some of its more beautiful blooms as they open. This variety in front of me here is called Summer Crush from the Endless Summer brand. It is a really beautiful hydrangea. It doesn't turn that blue color. It turns more of a purple because the blooms themselves are more of a reddish color. So I mentioned that earlier in this video. If you tend to have blooms that are a little more red, they may not turn that Nant Nantucket blue color, but it is known as a prolific rebloomer, and so all of this growth you can see right here just since i planted it the past week how much is coming into growth on these new stems this was one that was just put in a container earlier this year to grow on so it is a brand new hydrangea all of this beautiful green growth on it and we'll see how quickly we should get some blooms out of it this fall and I'm excited to see what those look like. This is a hydrangea macrophylla. It gets roughly one and a half to three foot wide, so it's small and tidy for the front of the border, and uh, it is hardy in zones four through nine. So a great choice for you if you love the pink blooms and you need a small place to stuck a really prolifically blooming hydrangea. So below me here is Pop Star. This is an Endless Summer hydrangea. This is the newest one to the collection. So Endless Summer is typically released a hydrangea about every five years. And this one is a macrophylla that has the lace cap blooms. It is hardy in zones four through nine and it stays smaller. So it stays also roughly one and a half to three foot tall and wide. And it is supposed to be one of the 
most prolific bloomers in their collection. And so this one was new this year, newly planted, and you can see how many buds it has on it and how many flowers it's produced. Now, some of these could be cut off and I'll come through and show you that at the end of this video, what you should do if you're taking off hydrangea blooms. I think they'll look fine for now. I'm gonna leave these on because it is producing new buds on some growth you can't see back here, and it's gonna be producing buds on this new growth to the side here. So we're gonna check out these fresh blooms as they come out. But if you're also looking for a nice lace cap bloom that really reblooms really quickly, it was known and released as the fastest reblooming hydrangea in the market on new growth. So we'll test it out and try. Now endless summer hydrangeas and first edition shrubs are both owned by Bailey Nursery. And this is a first edition shrub variety. I'm not clear on why they have some labeled in the summer, some first editions. I plan to ask that question this week. It may just be related to how they're marketing them. But this is one that I planted, not necessarily for its blooms, because I know it's not uh, like a super prolific rebloomer, but the foliage is gorgeous. And this is called Light O'Day. It is a hydrangea macrophylla, hardy in zones four through nine, and it can get pretty tall, three to five foot tall and wide and it's mostly known for its variegated foliage. And they do have really pretty blooms. Now this one, out of all the rebloomers that I have, I believe this to bloom only on old wood. So that's probably why it's not in the Endless Summer collection, but the blooms on it are really pretty. So I grabbed it anyway among the ones I found locally just to have the foliage texture in here to contrast with all of the green. So this is a new one to the market as of last year. It was announced last year at Cultivate and it is a hydrangea macrophylla with dark foliage, which is really interesting. It is a rebloomer, but it's part of first edition shrub line and it is hardy in zones four through nine and gets three to five foot tall and wide. Now, when I planted this, I think I looked at the tag and saw three and I didn't see five. So I planted it a little close to the border. Uh, it should have been a little further back, but we'll see, as I mentioned earlier in this video, whether it actually gets five foot tall or not. Here, because the stems tend to die back, I doubt these hydrangeas will reach five foot tall. It'll be a test of their hardiness for sure, but these blooms on this one tend to be a really dark, pink up to almost red and because of that when it turns its blue color uh, it's more of an amethyst purpley color so rather than a nantucket blue but it's a really beautiful hydrangea i'll show you some pictures on the screen of what its blooms look like this is a variety that i'm really excited to show you because i don't know if you've seen it at your local garden center here locally it was carried by siebenthalers but this is a variety called Starfield, and it is stunning. Not only do the leaves grow very upright and clustered like you can see right here, but the actual petals themselves on the blooms, and I'll show you a close up of these, are very pointed, and so it's really gorgeous. And you can see this hardly had any blooms on it when I bought it a couple weeks ago, and after I planted it, it has put on so many buds, and so I'm really excited about this variety. It is a variety by Blooming Easy, which I don't see a whole lot locally here in Southwest Ohio at our garden centers. It is a zone five to nine and gets roughly two to three foot tall and wide. So it'll be a beautiful front of the border plant, very sturdy stems and upright growth, really gorgeous blooms. And I think it's gonna be a good one based on how many buds it's set already just since being at this house for two weeks. All right, let's move on to Monrovia. I have four Monrovia hydrangeas to show you. Some of them are looking really good, a couple of them not so much, and I'll tell you what those are. This one first is Cape Lookout, and I really love it. It would be really great for cut flower arrangements. It is one of the ones that I told you is white, and it may change bloom color slightly just by the highlight on it depending on the soil pH. Right now it has the softest little blush pinking to it, which is really nice, and this is the first bloom on this hydrangea. Now, I'm not sure on some of these Monrovia ones how well they're going to do. We don't see a whole lot of Monrovia hydrangeas here. When this Seaside Serenade series was released a couple years ago, I saw them in the big box stores. Um, this one was purchased locally at a garden center called Siebenthalers, and I imagine since they don't sell as well around here, this has probably been sitting around since last year. Uh, a lot of the Monrovia ones I picked up are pretty big, and they don't have a lot of blooms on them except one of them. So this one's reblooming pretty well here. We'll see how many more blooms it produces this season, but it is known as a rebloomer. We'll just see how prolific it is as it continues to grow and how it does next year. 
but I really love it because it's a little different with these really roughly white blooms. It is his own four to nine and gets roughly three by three. So this is a Monrovia variety as well called Crystal Cove, and I'm really excited to see blooms off of this one if it will bloom. This is one I can definitely tell has been stuck around since last year just based on how the growth is pruned below the stem here. Um, it's looking really good. It grew a lot this year but no blooms and we're at the beginning of August so far. So this may have been kept in a sheltered greenhouse over winter. It may not have been, but if it was, it's not reblooming very well to have come out a little early. So we do have some disease present on this one. There is a lot of spotting, looks like a bacterial issue over here on this yellowish leaf. There's a few of them in here. Um, We'll see how well this one performs. The next Monrovia variety I want to show you is one I'm really excited about because it is reblooming really beautifully. And we'll give it a fresh start in the spring and see how it does next year in these conditions. Roughly three to four foot tall and wide and zones four through nine. Now this is a Monrovia variety I'm excited about. So this is called Fire Island. Zone four through nine, roughly three to four foot tall and wide. And it has produced so many blooms and they're just large and beautiful and healthy and they withstand the heat really well in their containers. So this is what it looks like when it comes out. You can see it's mostly white with pink edging, which is really stunning. And then it transitions and the blooms become a little more pink and then they become a little more pink and they become this very vivid pink. So this will probably be blue and more acidic soils with aluminum, but here I love how roughly these pink blooms are. It's one of the prettiest ones that I picked up from the garden center. And the stems are pretty sturdy. We did have a, some storms this week, and so these two to the side have fell over because the blooms are so big. But just a really stunning, really seems to be a well rebloomer too, um, to be a leftover from last year in its container. So I think this is gonna be a good one. So I tucked it so I could see it from the front door uh, with a lot of my other favorites here because it's gonna be really nice, I think. This is another Monrovia variety that is not blooming at all yet this season. This is called Hamptons, and it's supposed to have really tough stems, and this one does have very strong stems. Uh, and it's supposed to be similar to Summer Crush, so like a darker pink color. And if it would bloom, I'll show you the blooms on the screen, I think it'd be really pretty. But the fact that it's not even showing any flower buds yet is a bit of a concern to me as far as its rebloom, so we'll keep an eye on this. New growth is a little darker here. You can see that here on the screen, uh, and it gets roughly three to four foot tall and wide as well, already in zones four through nine. All right, now we're gonna transition to proven winners varieties. Uh, most of proven winners macrophyllas are listed through zones five through nine, so as I'm going through these, pretty much all of them are five to nine. Uh, this one is called Big Band, and it is a shorty. It gets one and a half to two foot tall and wide, and I love this one. This is one I did pick up from Cultivate, so it looks really good. Some of the blooms look a little rough um, from the hot weather we had before these got in the ground, so these are some ones I'm going to be cutting off, but I left them on to show you that if you're not giving these hydrangeas enough water or the proper conditions and in too much sun, this is what you're gonna be left with. But this is one right here. Like, look how big this is. The flowers and the petals are so big on it, and it has produced a new bud already since being planted last Friday. But this is like my favorite. If you could see it, and I'll show you a video or photo up close, the pollen area of all of these little blooms are very brightly blue and the petals are purple, so really stunning. So this is another Proven Winners variety that I purchased locally at a garden center and it's looking a little rough too. It has a little bit of bacterial fungal issues going on with it. So we'll see what it looks like next year when it releaves out and how it does. This is called Let's Dance Blue Jangles. Now the Let's Dance series, and there are a lot planted in this trial garden from the Let's Dance series from Proven Winners Hydrangeas. The genetics, from my understanding from Michael Durr's book for the Let's Dance series, came from Endless Summer, the original. So like I mentioned, a lot of the parentage for a lot of these hydrangeas came from the original. It's a shorty hydrangea, one to three foot tall and wide, so I placed it at the front of the border. It's on five through nine, like a lot of the other Proven Winners varieties I'm showing you, and it does not have any blooms on it yet. So I'm not sure about its rebloom capability. I think this is a little bit of an older one in the series, so some of the newer ones might rebloom better. But if it blooms, it'll be really cute and pretty, so. 
we'll keep an eye on this one the rest of the season and test it out next year. So this one is Proven Winners Let's Dance Can Do. And so what's interesting about this variety compared, I think I only have two or so in this entire trial garden that is a hybrid between Macrophylla and Serrata. So the reason they're hybridizing is to bring bud hardiness to these. So this one Proven Winners say that they, at their trial gardens in Michigan, um, outside their building, they cut them to the ground in winter or in early spring, and then they see how quickly they can rebloom, and they're supposed to rebloom really quickly, similar to Popstar that I showed you from Endless Summer. But this one is a newly planted one this year in its container. Picked it up locally. It's just starting to set its first bud since it's been with me, but there are a few um, buds down here. So this is one of the ones that sets blooms all along its stem. And so you may see buds or blooms that are inside the canopy of the hydrangea. I have five of these already that are being planted behind the behind me here in the flower bed in front of the home to test um, their full sun capability. They get full sun there and they will for a number of years. As some of the things grow up, they get, they'll get a little more shade. Um, I planted these at the last garden as well. Uh, I am not set on them yet. They seem to have a lot of dieback for me in winter, but I've not had them for multiple years. And if you plant something um, and you have a lot of dieback in winter, then it may just not have enough time to settle in. So I wanted to test it here in a little more shade to see how it does under this tree. But right now it's looking really good and we're getting some new buds. And so, like I mentioned, I did treat all of these with um, chelated iron because this is one of them up front in that flower bed that were showing some iron issues. So we'll continue to test it. This one also gets roughly three to four foot tall and wide and it's a little more hardier zone four to nine because it does have that serrata blood running through it. All right y'all this is one of my favorite new varieties on the market. Let's dance lovable. So this one for me I have planted last fall in the shaded area behind the house it was still blooming right before our first frost and as early this summer as some of the earliest macrophylas I have in my garden. I received a few more to trial from Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs this spring and they are just the tiniest things and they're still producing three and four blooms already and I've had them in the ground maybe a couple months. Um, you can see all of the new blooms that this is setting since I planted it last Friday. There's one, two, three, four five, six. I may be missing some up front. I'm not sure, but it is very floriferous. And so I love that about it. Here you can see it's more of a kind of a purpley pink. Um, the ones up front near my house are very vivid pink. So based on the soil conditions, they will be pink probably here. I'm going to try and change all of these blue and I'm going to be giving them all the same amount of, um, bluing agent so like a sulfur aluminum sulfate or another uh, product that will supposedly turn them blue and we'll see how well they turn blue if i give them all the same amount we can see which ones turn the most blue easily uh, and that will be a nice test trial from year to year but i love this one it produces a ton of buds uh, it is a bigger one it'll get three to four foot tall and wide similarly sized to the rest of them but the sheer number of blooms it pumped out, I did get this one from Cultivate, so it looks very much in pristine uh, show condition, but still a really nice one based on my experience trialing it for the past 10 months or so. So this variety I also received from Cultivate, and it was looking a little rough at the show when I got it because those shrubs have a hard time being watered there. They basically have to give them ice cubes because it's a show, and it's set up several days in advance and then runs for about three days. And so there are a lot of buds on here that I would consider completely removing uh, after this video, but I left them on here to again show you that if you're not giving your hydrangea, macrophylla, or serrata the right conditions, these are what the blooms may look like all the time. And if you plant it and it's doing this anyway in ideal conditions, it may just be that it's its first year and it needs to settle in. Drip irrigation helps solve a lot of those issues and that's why I use it. But this is another interesting variety called Skyview that is a cross between Macrophylla and Serrata. So it is a hybrid and it's supposed to be easy to turn blue. You can see how baby uh, pink these blooms are. So when they turn blue, they'll also be that Nantucket blue. It gets uh, two to four foot tall and wide, depending on its conditions and where it's planted. And I have had some issues. I have this one already. I've had a couple issues with this and chlorosis this year as well. 
So this is another one. I gave all of these chelated iron, but this is another one. And one of the reasons why I gave it chelated iron because of all the ones that had chlorosis, it was the worst. And so we're gonna continue seeing how this one does. I do not see any new blooms on this one. So I don't know that it's as prolifically reblooming as lovable right here that I just showed you. But if it's easy to turn blue, it might be a good option for those of us who have a higher pH to bring down that pH easily and get some nice blue hydrangea flowers. So this is a series called Tough Stuff. This is tiny tough stuff. I could not get the tough stuff uh, specific variety. These are all hydrangea serrata that have supposedly really hardy buds through winter. So they'll bloom on old growth that the buds are supposed to be hardier and make it through winter and new wood and you can see it's already producing lots of buds on here now i had tiny tough stuff at my last home i had it planted under a magnolia a sweet bay magnolia out the front of my home those of you who have been following me for years have probably seen those they did not reliably rebloom for me very well and i typically had a lot of dieback on them um, but they may not have been getting enough sun so here these are at the edge of the canopy of this maple they're going to be getting some glorious morning sun for a very long time. Uh, and I think they're going to do really well. So I like the Stuff Tough variety because they are supposed to rebloom really well. And I've seen them rebloom really well in other uh, YouTube creators' gardens if given the right conditions. So right now is the color I love on these. They're both pink and purpley. And it's a really stunning color combination. So this one stays small. It is tiny, tough stuff. So one and a half to two foot tall and wide. This one might be approaching more two and a half now. These are kind of tall. At my last garden, they did not get very tall because they died down quite a bit in winter. So something we'll be testing at this new garden. I have a little better soil conditions here than I did at the last garden. So you can see this has got three buds on it that were not on it when I planted it last week. And how good it's looking from a container this year. There are some rough looking buds on here that you could come on and snip off, uh, which I'll be doing to clean these up, but a really nice one, hardy zones four through nine, and it'll make a really nice one. If you can't grow macrophyllas, uh, Tiny Tough Stuff will probably more reliably bloom for you. So I have such hope for Tiny Tough Stuff because I also had at my last garden, Tough Stuff Aha. Tough Stuff Aha is a two to three foot wide hydrangea hardy thumb zones four through nine and it's a mountain serrata so it has the lace cab blooms but the little flower petals on the ends or the edges of the bloom look like water lilies they're so big and this one did really rebloom with for me quite well so i have this one facing morning sun as well it's going to get mostly morning sun this monrovia variety will probably block some of the afternoon sun but this is the same situation i had it in at my last house i had it planted out front I did have it planted in the rear and it got too much sun and it was burning so I moved it to east facing morning light and they were blooming really well for me when I moved from that garden. So you can see I just planted this. It did not have any buds on it last week when I planted it. It's got one, two, three, four on it. So now that it's gotten in the ground, it is a much happier hydrangea. There's actually a bud down here, five, oh, six, seven. So you can see how much, oh, and here's another one, eight. So it's produced eight buds, or it set eight buds over the past week. Uh, those may have been starting when I planted them, but I didn't see them. But this is a really exciting variety that stays smaller, nice lace cap blooms with really big, big um, uh, petals on the outside of those blooms that are really interesting. So good choice for those of us in colder zones. If you give it the right, I would suggest morning light. So this is one that I received from Proven Winners Color Choice at Cultivate as well. But I also have this one that I planted last fall that Proven Winners sent out for me to trial. It's a new release called Tough Stuff Top Fun. So this is a hydrangea serrata, has lace cap blooms as you can see here. It is producing new buds already and it gets two to three foot tall and wide hardy in zones four through nine but the interesting thing about this one is you can't see it in these blooms because they're aged but as it's emerging the infertile florets which are the ones on the outside here you can see them here and here uh, and the fertile florets which are the ones in the center are stay green so it's kind of an interesting color combination there with the green and the pink or the green and the purpley blue depending on your soil chemistry so this one's going to be a really interesting i think it is coming back from last year it tends to have doing a little bit better than some of my other tough stuff hydrangeas 
Uh, I think it might be getting a little more shade than it wants in the back. So this will be an interesting uh, placement for it because it will get both some morning sun and some afternoon sun in this location and we'll see how well it does. But I like how it's kind of like growing out a little bit, not so much tall right now. We'll keep an eye on that, but I think it'll be a beautiful edge of the border plant for you if you're looking for a hydrangea serrata. So this is a hydrangea I also picked up at Cultivate. It is not in the Let's Dance series. It is in the Wee Bit series. So the Wee Bit series was bred to replace a series from Proven Winners called City Line. Uh, those hydrangeas are no longer carried. I had grown them uh, in my last garden. I had tried one of them and it died over winter. The City Line series was more for like um, florist cutting type hydrangeas so they didn't survive really well in cold climates. This one has been bred with a Let's Dance Rave, which I also have, but it's not under this tree because it's been discontinued by Proven Winners. It was one of the early Endless Summer offspring that Proven Winners had to create a lot of these other hydrangeas and it does rebloom. Um, so this parentage is Let's Dance Rave. This is called Wee Bit Giddy. It stays small, uh, one and a half to two and a half foot tall and wide. And it produces really beautiful um, mop head hydrangea blooms that you could use really wonderfully for cutting. These right here look rough because they were um, just dried. They need to be cut off, but it's producing new growth below here. And this is a newer looking bloom you can see, but you can see how big some of the florets get on Wee Bit Giddy here. So a really beautiful hydrangea. You can see a new bud here producing already. So this is going to be a, a pretty good rebloomer, I think. And we'll see how it continues reblooming in comparison to some of the others from the actual Let's Dance series. So let's talk about pruning hydrangea macrophylla and serrata. Like I mentioned, you don't want to prune these uh, unless you need to remove old blooms. You can prune them, but you're going to be risking losing blooms if you cut them into the shrubs. So this is a beautiful bloom right here. I'm not gonna be pruning that one off, but you can see how rough this one looks. It's detracting from the shrub. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the bloom back a little bit and you can see there's all these shoots here that still hold the florets. I'm gonna go back to this first big set of leaves here and cut right above it. And that's it. So I'm gonna do that to all of these that look a little rough, going all the way back to that first set of leaves. You can see there are a couple leaves typically behind the hydrangea. There's usually a set of two behind the bloom. You normally need to go past those because you can see the bloom um, structure kind of flows below those stems and you just want to cut back to the next set of leaves. This one here also looks a little rough so we'll cut that one off and this will be a test of how well this one reblooms. So when we look at this hydrangea again in a few weeks, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off too because it's turning a little brown. It was left over from being in the container, so it was looking a little rough. So you can see this one starting to set a new bud there. Uh, this is Let's Dance Big Band. This bloom still looks good, but in the coming weeks, if it starts to look rough, you would do it the same way. And that will encourage some rebloom on these reblooming hydrangeas. So that was a lot of hydrangeas, wasn't it? So we're going to be testing these out. I have four left over that I'm going to show you in a separate video coming up. Not exactly sure where I'm gonna put those yet. I need to get some more wood chips. I have some left over from a chip drop I just got, but I did use a lot of those to mulch some areas of the garden that hadn't been mulched this year, but I'm considering doing them right here. They'll get similar soil conditions. The only problem is I don't wanna to have to trench to um, this tree like I had to trench this other one, but I may have to do it anyway. So. Uh, there'll be eventually be stuff planted under it probably and if I'm going to be trialing these hydrangeas I want to make sure they get enough water to perform well and ideal conditions like all of the others here. Uh, some of the interesting ones that are left over are Rock and Roll which is an actual introduction that Michael Durr founded. Uh, the man who wrote the book, the, the hydrangea book that I just showed you. And I think that if you are interested in hydrangeas, you should really check out that book. There's so much information in it. I reread the Hydrangea Macrophylla and Serrata chapters twice before producing this video just to find some information that I didn't know. For example, I didn't know that the Let's Dance series from Proven Winners had been bred down from Endless Summer, the original. Uh, and it's, ex it's interesting to know the parentage of some of these because a lot of that's not out 
to the public necessarily, but Michael Durr, because he's a breeder and he's in those circles, he knows where a lot of the parentage from these things come. And he is very open and honest about how some of those hydrangeas have performed for him uh, in Georgia. So if you live in Georgia, I would definitely recommend you check out the book if you're looking for the ideal hydrangea down there. Stick around and follow along for the next video as I travel to Bailey Nurseries to see where the home of some of these endless summer and first edition shrubs come from. Really excited about that trip um, because Bailey offers some of their shrubs directly for sale on their online store. So they actually have really big containers and they grow bare roots in fields, hydrangeas and some of their shrubs, which is really fun and interesting. So. I'm excited to be able to go see like fields of actual shrubs being grown. Uh, that's not something I've seen before. So it'll be a very interesting experience. Thank you all for following along. And remember, be a light. Take care.